Well, hello and welcome to my shop here on August 9th. So today I've got this little meter to work on. I realized the other day I don't have enough vacuum tube volt meters in my life. I need more and here's one here. So this is a uh, probably what you might call a mid-priced meter that's made by a company called, called Ico. Where are you going there? It's made by a company called Ico. Everybody remain vertical. And so I think this is pretty typical of uh, equipment that uh, repair people would have because they can't go out and buy the most expensive you know, laboratory quality equipment. It's just pretty popular stuff here. So let's take a look at it and we're going to turn it on and see if it works. So first of all, it's come with all of its cords here. So these two, one's a pointer and one's a clip. So the clip one is connected to what's labeled as the common input. This side, this side says ohms dash AC. It's a little pointed guy. Hmm. This one, what's this great big, great big banana? It's uh, so it's shielded. The shield is connected to the outside. Shielded, eh? I don't think there's anything special about this. resistor or anything in here. And this is plugged into the DC volts. So it has a shielded wire. Hmm. Grounded at one end. Okay, now what else can we find out about this guy here? Let's see. Um, function and range. Function and minus DC plus DC plus DC ohms and AC volts. And over here we've got uh, R times 1 up to R times 1 meg. Uh, very high resistance and 5 volts 10, 100, 500, 1000 volts. So 100, 510, eh, pretty good scales. Very good. And we have a couple of adjustments here. We have a zero adjustment and an ohms adjustment. So there could be a battery inside this guy. One and a half volt regular. As regular as they can be anymore. D, D cell. D cell. Okay. Well, let's switch it on and we'll give it some, some things to test. Here we go. Oh, wait a minute here. I'm flipping my dim bulb lights just behind here. Okay, so this meter here reveals what the lights can't because there isn't enough current being drawn by this. But you can see the voltage drop down and then come back up. Okay, this is this is rising up here. So we'll start off with this set to DC plus volts. Well, let's move it around and see what happens. ohms it's fallen to the zero mark. Ohms, the ohm scale. So the uh, scale, there's a red scale here you can hardly see. And some red lettering here it says ohms on the top scale, which is certainly what it looks like. DC minus, DC plus off zero. Now it could be warming up. Okay, to supply a known voltage here, um, I'm going to do this with a little bit of precision. So I'm going to take my calibrated, reliable. Well, maybe not. You know what we're going to use? We're going to use my digital meter. I'm just going to 
use another vacuum tube volt here, but let's use this guy because we can trust this guy is accurate. And we're going to want to connect these together or hold them together anyway. We'll connect them together. Okay, I'll use a clip lead of. Uh, lead from the meter and then we'll clip lead over here. We need a, a source of power now. So jump. Way off zero. Okay, source of voltage. sound there. Is that this meter jumping? Like a bouncing, the pointer bouncing off the... Let, let me re-zero this. There we are. Okay, we'll turn this guy on and we'll stick him at 15 volts. According to that meter, we'll hook the meter up here. voltage is. Voltage is zero. How can this be? Because I've done a dumb thing here. <laughs> I've hooked the meter to itself instead of hooking it to this meter. There we go. Okay, now we can read the actual voltage here. 14.47. Look on the meter, we're on the 100 volt scale. So, 100 volt scale, this would be reading about 12 here. Let's check the zero on it. about 12 on there. 14 is the correct voltage, I'm sure. It seems to be just a wee bit low. Uh, let's try another scale. So we're going to turn this down to, let's say, 7.5 volts. And we'll set the scale back. 10 volt scale, it's reading just above 7. Just a hair above seven, so it's a little low again. Okay, let's go the other way. So we'll go up in scale, uh, 500 volt scale. My little uh, volt voltage supply here is not all that great. We can take it up to 30 volts, and let's go back to the 100 scale. It's reading about 26 instead of 30. On the 500 scale, this is a little tough to read. 500 scale, it's reading, uh, this would be 100, 50, 40, 30, it's about 26 on there. Um, when it really should be 30, low again. Check the zero, the zero is holding in. Well, it's a little low, 20, 29 volts. Once again, this would be closer to 24 here that it's reading. 
So a touch low, probably just a simple adjustment inside to calibrate it, calibrate it correctly. Uh, okay, what about the AC side of things? So we have switch to this lead, this lead, two black leads coming out of this meter. And we would want to read an AC voltage. So what have I got that's easily available? The outlet. The outlet is easily available. Do I dare try it with this? So this is a three prong, has a three prong plug on it, but it's plugged into an isolation transformer. The ground is going nowhere. In fact, you can see it. Just the ground lug is sitting right, right here. Not going anywhere. So it's ungrounded at the moment. So it should be able to ground any, any part of it and not worry about it. Should be able to shove this into an outlet and not worry about it. But you know what? <laughs> it's one of those things where you know you, you might find out you're wrong. Uh, shoving stuff in an outlet and finding out you're wrong doesn't sound like the best idea to me. Um, although I did take it off of this feed here. Let's try that. So this feed. No, is around. We don't know. Let's let's measure it. Feed I'm talking about is just ordinary house power. Let's see what we've got here. One hundred and twenty, almost exactly one twenty. Okay. this on AC. Is this lead and the common? And put this on the 500 volt scale. So it should be coming up to just just right in here. We'll make an accurate reading if we can. Just a wee bit. Something like this. So it's coming up on the scale there. That would read fifty. 50, uh, look like uh, 55 volts, I think, is what that would read. So we're on the 100 volt scale. That won't, that's not 55. Oh, this is. No, we're on a 500 volt scale. Right, 500 volt scale. 50, 55 volts. About half what it should be. That's curious. Okay, so we got some problems with this guy. Uh, we might as well check its own reading, too. Ohms again are this and this. It's going nowhere. Probably, as I said before, there's probably a battery inside here. Long worn out. Okay, so to take this guy apart, one screw back here, and then screws around here. Okay, let's do that. I'm going to plug it. Screw this, and I'm going to drink some coffee right now, too. Okay. So yesterday here was a gray, rainy day, uh, most of the day. Today, it's full sunshine, and not very hot. It's not hot here. It's cool. I think the high today is 20. Okay. We got one more in the back. Maybe I'll pull these out. Oh, there's a 
battery in there. <laughs> a battery of a crystallized battery there. So we'll deal with that in a minute. Just taking a look at it. Uh, there's a little wax capacitor here. So no one's done anything to this guy. Those are probably the original tubes. Three of them in there. A couple of adjustments. Um, could it be that this was a kit? Um, you know, I don't know. Uh, Ico stuff? Was it a kit? I guess we better get this battery out of here. So to do that... I have the feeling it's dead. stuff dangerous that's that's come out of here? How do you even get it to come out? How did they fit it in there? Well, I'm gonna get some on my finger here. So these batteries, I know if you cut them open there's usually black, black tarring material inside them and people think that's where the energy is, but no. The energy is actually in the case of the battery. The battery case would be zinc and this is attached to a carbon rod and then the black material is just an electrolyte designed to support the uh, redox reactions that are going to occur in the battery. Um, at some point with these batteries, unless they're leak proof, this might actually be a leak proof battery. <laughs> Doesn't look like it. Um, the leak proof battery has a steel case on the outside of the lead case and uh, the steel won't, won't uh, corrode away. Now this is split open from pressure here. The steel case is, is popped open because it's just a wrap. And I don't know if this is a leak proof battery. What does it say on it? Oh! Oh, I thought that was a coffee time indicator, but it's not. Caution, read instructions carefully. Be sure to something or other. Improper use, something or other, it's all gone. Do not, <laughs> do not, and then they can't read what you're not supposed to do. Alkaline battery. Typically, you don't put alkaline batteries in these devices, but it's probably uh, not going to hurt it. How old is this battery? Uh, yeah, it's not. It's not going back to the '60s. I don't think. No way. So, do we need to test this to see if there's any left in it? I don't think so. Okay. So, is is this material dangerous in some way? It, well, I wouldn't eat it. It wouldn't let my cats eat it. Um, it could be acidic, or it could be alkaline. I don't know. I don't know my battery chemistry that well. This is black material here. The uh, paint is coming right off onto my fingers. I don't like that. Okay, enough handling. I'm going to stop for a minute. Fun with a dead battery. I'm, I'm going to wash my hands here. So what this could easily be is this could be a, a lead salt of some sort. Uh, who's the, who knows? In that case, this is not very good stuff. I wouldn't be at all surprised to find out that that's lead. Uh, okay, I'm going to dump this in the garbage here. Uh, temporary garbage. Goes. Okay, so lead's a bad actor with, uh, obviously we know that. It's a bad, look at all the stuff inside here. Um, green color here, greenish blue color, that's a copper uh, corrosion, it's almost certainly copper. What can we see about that? It's pretty, it's in pretty rough shape. Big copper crystals on it, looks like uh, it's probably copper chloride, but it could be almost anything. Uh, uh, the 
copper oxide is a brown color. You see that on wires all the time. When you look at a copper wire before you polish it up with um, you know, sandpaper or something like that. It has a bit of a brownish color and that's copper oxide, which is conductive, which is what makes copper the fantastic material it is. And it's exactly the opposite for aluminum. Aluminum also builds up a patina on the surface very, very quickly. Aluminum oxide. Aluminum oxide is not conductive, which is why aluminum connections can get into trouble. Over, over you, can, you, you brush them clean, you make the connection. If it's exposed to oxygen, it's going to oxidize, which is why uh, aluminum wiring in homes is, uh, in my view anyway, less than desirable. There's a big push here in uh, Canada, in Ontario, for aluminum wiring in homes because we have a lot of aluminum here, uh, a lot of bauxite in uh, Quebec. And uh, so, so we, we have lots of aluminum available. So the thinking was, ah, aluminum cables, aluminum wiring in your home. You know, I, I don't know if I would even buy a home with aluminum wiring. It's not the wires. It's all the connections and all the boxes. And I might as well say one more thing. People with aluminum wiring may want to change one of the outlets or switches in their house for some reason. And when they do it, they may just go out and innocently buy a regular you know, wall switch or, or outlet, and it's really intended for copper. You need to buy special ones that are intended for aluminum, otherwise you are really asking for trouble. And plus, I think even, and you know, I'm not the one to, you know, don't take my advice. I think periodically you should be tightening the screws on aluminum wiring. Um, now maybe I'm wrong in that, so you know if you've got aluminum wiring you should look into this. So while I'm talking I'm examining everything here, trying to spot anything else that's somewhat curious. There's a large wattage resistor back here which looks just a little roughed up. And. Uh, I'm going to have to find the manual, the service manual, because there are adjustments which probably need to be made. Now what about these tubes? What do we got up here for, for tubes? Okay, one of them looks like a rectifier tube. They're little guys, little, little, little short guys. This is a 6X5. These are not common tubes, and that's something about these kinds of instruments. They're liable to, to have have in them tubes which are not common to radios, so they're not common, period. 6SN7, oh this is a very common tube, <laughs> I will say. This is the amplifier tube, uh, what are they amplifying? And this last one, 6H6, is a, is a small uh, diode tube, not likely to be in trouble, but it could be. Okay, um, and we have adjustments. So the meter's working. It seems to be out of calibration. Uh, the old meter side of it, you know, I, I won't bother putting a battery in here. Uh, what will happen is it'll be forgotten about again, and sooner or later it'll start to start to leak and, and fail in that. And for what? For making ohm readings, I'm never going to make with this with this instrument. I mean, what am I going to do with it? I, I literally have vacuum tube voltmeters uh, everywhere. <laughs> So it could just be a matter of calibrating it, very simply. Um, well, and it ha does have some wax capacitors, and why would I even think they would need changing? There's an electrolytic one in here too, and then there's a big guy down here, quite a big one. Well like any old thing like this, there's a good chance those wax capacitors are, are not in the best of uh, condition. Um, bad enough to throw the meter off? That's just a question of calibrating, isn't it? I can't remember if the light comes on or not. I think it does. Okay, um, well I think probably the e easiest and best thing to do, if it's all original, try to leave it original if you can do it, and just uh, work the calibration controls on it to get the meter operating properly. One, two, three, four. There's four adjustments. Okay, let me see if I can hunt down any information about the meter before we do anything more to it. Okay, here's a look at the uh, schematic here. I got this from Radio Museum, and unfortunately, it's not a very good 
version here. Uh, the print is all blocky, so it's a, it's a really terrible scan, but maybe we can figure a few things out. Now there's four variable resistors or potentiometers that would certainly appear to be calibration adjustments. And right here, here is here, oops, here's one of them right here. Here's another one down here. And the last two are located here. What's this? Ohm's adjust. Okay, so this is right on the front panel. This is Ohm's adjust. There's another front panel adjustment here. Uh, zero adjust. Now where is that? So if that's Ohm's. This one down here. Cali calibrate. DC. Sorry there. My uh, mouse is acting up. DC calibrate for minus DC. Is this plus DC? Plus DC. Plus DC calibrate. Minus DC calibrate. There's a number there. R. Maybe 27. Someone has written the resistance numbers on the machine itself, so this might be helpful. And this one would be R. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, R23 here. Let me just see if I see that. R29. R30, R27, and R5 is what I see. I don't see any R23, but this may not be a 3. This just may be a terribly distorted thing. Now, where's the last Where's the last one? Oh, no, I did find Ohm's adjust. Front panel. Uh, there's one more. One more front panel adjustment. Would be, this is Ohm's adjust. So the other front panel adjustment is... Uh, a zero, and that that would probably be something like this. This is just says adjustment. It looks like R12 here, and this one volt. Oh boy, oh boy. Lead. What's that say? Oh boy, something ad a AC adjustment. I can't read this. Um. Well, uh, that's tricky business. Now, these these adjustments are the ones I'm after, really. And they they are associated directly with what looks like the meter here. Is this the meter? That must be the meter. So they would be literally in, in, right up close to the meter somehow, electrically. Uh, No, zero. So zero, it didn't really sound like a balancing thing. It would sound like this. M12, something, looks like 2K, 6SN7 adjust. That's a 6SN7. Why is this so clear? And this is also so clear. It just must be, the print must have been just a little different. 6X5, I think that's a, this is not a common tube, I don't think doesn't mean it's not available. Well, I'm not spotting it. I'm not spotting. Here's, there's where the battery is there. I'm not spotting the zero adjustment. Up here? Did I miss it up here? Okay. Uh, I've looked for a better version of the schematic. I could not find one, so I'm stuck with this for now. Uh, let's go back and look at the machine some more. Okay, so you, you could fiddle, you know, try this, try that, see which one does what, but that might be quite misleading. You can look underneath, kind of see how the circuits run. Oh boy, they're all yellow wires. Could you have used another color? So you might be able to sort something out by looking at the wires. Who's who? Like, for instance, this adjustment here has two identical resistors attached to the outside of it. That's got to be a giveaway for something. Oh, I, this is the, uh, I know which one this is. Let's, two identical resistors on the outside of it. Would it, would it be these two? 
there's is there any other this also has well here here's the value of 1k two identical resistors now I'm looking back at the uh, machine and it's brown uh, I'd say it's orange green green that's kind of weird that'd be 335 35 really 30, 35 something in here look like that, that, there's a five there's a three <laughs> Yeah, this really does look like 1K, and it's right off here. So let's look and see if I can find one of these controls with 1K resistors coming off it. And the answer is uh, no offhand. No, I don't see it. Well, I'd really like to get a better schematic here. There's a resistor right off the center of this one. And it goes right over to this adjustment, which is the zero, which I couldn't find. I couldn't find the zero. So if we look for one of these with a resistor, and this is orange, black, red. So that would be Three zero that'd be three thousand three thousand ohm resistor. Oh my gosh, here's another three thousand ohm resistor here. That's gonna confuse them. No, this is on the center. On the center of an adjustment. Okay, let's take a look again. So here here's the center, but look, you know, I can't. Not this one. Oh, these two are open at one end. Is that really so? Just open at one end. These are just straight variable resistors here. That's a big end. That's a big, big end. And this is the only, this is the only one. I don't know, I can play this game for quite a while here. Let's look for the, uh, the ones that are open on one end. Sounds like a good way to go. So this is not open on one end. Actually, the, the, this is the uh, this one's open on one end. And and this one is open on one end. So those, those, wait a minute now, there's a third one that's open on one end, come on, don't, don't, uh, don't take away my, so there's another one that's open on one end, I'm repeating myself, okay, so let's look again, open on one end, it's not this one, it's not this one. One, one of these two is going to be the uh, zero, the zero adjust. I think that's a zero, zero. Amplifier, volt, something. This is open on one end here. Right there. Let's see, ohms, ohms adjust. But this is the front panel. Here's another one down here. Oh, AC calibration. Open on one end. So there's three of them that are open on one end. <laughs> yeah, okay, time for a coffee. I'll sort this out here. And just like magic, 24 hours has gone by. It's the next day now. What happened yesterday was I left my shop briefly and I never came back. <laughs> it's just too nice a day, too many things to do. Okay, so before starting again just now, I've spent some time trying to sort out the four adjustments that are back here uh, based on the blocky schematic I've got. And, uh, you know, I've got a guess. I've got a guess. <laughs> That's about the best I can do. Um, so... 
there are four adjustments back here. On this machine, they've got resistor numbers written on them. R5, R30, R27. Those don't match the schematic numbers, as best I can tell. So exactly what's going on here, I don't know. Maybe there's more than one version of this meter. Maybe I've got a version different from the schematic, or who knows? Who wrote those, those uh, on there? I don't know. None of it added up anyway. So I did it by just tracing wires as best I could. <clears throat> so I have a little diagram here. Here's the two front panel controls here. And then I've got the four adjustments at the back, and you can see I've labeled them. DC, minus and plus, AC calibrate, and AC zero. That's what I think they are. We're going to find out. Now, I want to be able to test this up to a fairly high voltage, so I've connected up to this high voltage supply, which I'm going to put on standby. And then I have this other voltmeter here connected also, so we can get an, a very accurate uh, voltage reading from this meter. I'm pretty sure this is quite reliable to use. So we're ready to start. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, DC plus. DC plus would be the most common range used on this meter. Uh, my plan is to abandon the uh, 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 ohm, uh, the ohm scale. I don't need it. I have other meters and uh, am I even going to have this meter in my shop? What <laughs> Join all the others that are in here. So switch this off. Apply the power. And I just I just noticed that in the cabinet here is a whole pile of uh, remnants of that battery. I better get that out of there. Surely to goodness that's corrosive if it gets wet. I would think. Okay, so here we go. Now I have no voltage coming in. This is the voltage. I have nothing applied to the meter right now. give it a little bit of time to warm up here. In fact I'm gonna have to give it I'm gonna have to give it some coffee slurps. I'm gonna go slurp coffee. Okay. Well settle down on zero but didn't I zero this the last time I operated it? So the zero on the front panel does zero it. Okay set to let's start on the 100 volt scale and I'll try to crank this up to say 50 and then this should be straight up 50 so uh, here we go A little jump from the machine when I turned it on there okay here we go Fifty. It's just slightly low. So um, a DC plus calibration, according to my determination, is this one. Wow, that made a big difference. <laughs> I just barely moved it in the machine here. Okay. Okay, it's right on right on fifty. Fifty. Okay, let's take it up to one hundred. One hundred would be right at the very top of the scale, of course. 100 volts, here we go. It's 100 and, you know, it's a little bit below here. Okay, we're going to change scales. We'll go to the 500 scale. 100 volts will be right there. It's right on the money. Fantastic. Now we'll take this up to, how high do you dare? Let's go for, I don't think I can get to 500 with this, can I? Make it all the way to 500. The meter on the actual control panel stops at 400, so let's, let's take it to 300. Okay, 
300. 300 on here would be, so it's a little high here. So it's reading 310 instead of 300. Well, I don't think that that's too disturbing. Let's go to the other extreme now. We'll take it way down much more on the uh, 10 volt scale. Oh, phone call time. Likely fraud. <laughs> yes, I think I'm not going to answer that. I'd say half the phone calls I get, not that I get a lot of phone calls, but half the phone calls I get are uh, show up like that, likely fraud. Okay, uh, where, so where we were going for 5 volts, wasn't that what I was doing? How quickly I forget. Put this on the 60 scale for some reason, 5 volts, here we go. to adjust it that accurately. That's about as close as I'm going to get. And again, it's straight up right on the 5. Excellent. And if we take it up to 10, maybe we'll find it just comes up a little bit short. Like it did on the other scale. So here's 10. And it's right on. So on this scale, it's very, very accurate. Well, we, we might as well try the 5 volt scale. So let's put it back to 5. Five. Five volt scale. It's just a little over. That's not bad. Okay, now we're going to try to test the reverse voltage. Um, so this is plugged into an isolation transformer. There's no chance of a grounding conflict. I think I can just flip around the leads up here on my uh, on my supply machine. It has <coughs> A grounded terminal and and a uh, common terminal. I'm on the common terminal, so they really shouldn't. So I'm just worried about reversing these things and, and uh, supplying into a ground. Let's turn that right off. Turn that off. Switch the leads here. Uh, I've got to do it up here. Okay, so we want to switch the leads. So this, this one is the ground, nothing happened. Pretty sure this is just fine to do. So this is going to read negative. Oh no, this will continue to read positive, but this guy will read negative. He is already. That's the negative setting. And we're jumping all around. The uh, control here is set so low, maybe it's in a dirty area. Oh, I've got this on standby. That's what it is. Duh. Okay, here we go. Uh, we're on the 100 volt scale, so we'll shoot for 50 volts again. So if I'm able to calibrate this without doing any changes to any of the parts, then that's just fine by me. And no reason to jump in there and start changing capacitors. So there we are, that's pretty accurate. 50, pretty close, just a hair over. So I think this is the negative adjustment. Okay, we're running the risk of dirt again. Same thing happened. Oh. actually clean these guys out to get them to so this one's close to the end of its run here which, which would, would suggest something else is out of order but again if I can calibrate it I have to spray a little cleaner into this one Jumpy guy. 
guy. volts 51 volts 51 volts very good we can take this up to 100 100 and we're showing up a little low here but 95 instead but it should be 99 it's about 94 now Not bad though. Uh, generally speaking, when you're using a meter like this, oh, for crying out loud, oh, for crying out loud, when you're using a meter like this, you tend to want the readings to be kind of in the middle of the of the range anyway. But not bad. Okay. Uh, next one to test would be the AC volts. Do I have a I have a variable AC voltage supply, and it's coming out of here. Or I just go for the 120 volts. 112. Why don't we just why don't we just measure this? 112. So to do that, disconnect the uh, here. Turn the voltage down, and we take the common lead. This is where things get a little nervy. common lead grounded. Judging from what I see in the back, that's all it is. When you when you put this in, all it's doing is connecting to the chassis. There's no wires from back here. It's just bolted right to the chassis. So uh, how do they do the power cord on this? We should take a look at the schematic as, as, as crummy as it is. Let's take a look. So I want to look at the power supply. So the power comes in, uh, reaches a transformer, and goes out. So there's, n there's no connection here to the chassis except for that guy. We need, we need to find this guy, C1. We need to find him and change him. Uh, uh, let's take a look where that is. Got the power. Pull the plug here just to be sure. Hey, change the camera. Okay, so I've pulled the plug out. See the cord come in. It's a three pronger. You can see the green wire is soldered right here to the chassis. Okay, now when I'm operating it though and plugging it into this, that third prong is going nowhere. So, uh, so, so then we have these two going on the other side of the meter here. So here's one coming over to this terminal, and here's a capacitor going straight down to the chassis. So this is the guy we want to go after. Uh, also see a big electrolytic one here, uh, which. I'd have to put the scope on here and look for a hum before bothering with changing that. But I think this one here is worth changing because uh, this is very important. Um, well, because this is essentially a polarized plug, you can only plug it in the outlet one way, then this side should be grounded uh, I, you know, all the time. A lot of my instruments do not have three-prong plugs. I wonder if somebody added this in. This is a replacement. And they chose to put the uh, green wire down onto the chassis. Well, uh, if they'd done it wrong, we would, we would know already, so it can't be done wrong. And replace the power cord, but not do any more to the unit. Yeah, I'm going to change that guy just because... 
because th there is a there's a bit of an issue with it there. terminal that's uh, bolted to the uh, chassis so it takes a lot of uh, heat to raise its temperature get the solder to melt. It takes some time for the heat to flow Okay, so that makes this, uh, I, I wouldn't say a little bit safer, uh, but if that capacitor had failed into a short Powie, now what condition is this capacitor actually in? We can test it. 0 0.0022. Okay, we're going to give it a test here. So I'm going to put some DC voltage across it with this device. Raise the voltage up in steps, and we can see how much current is leaking through it. Well, we can't really measure the amount of current leakage, but we can tell if it is leaking current by looking at the magic eye here. Okay, so you can see the open pi. When I hit the switch, when I hit the switch, I'm trying to shade it. Um, the pie should snap closed and then come open again. Well, wow, that's interesting. So it didn't snap closed. Uh, there's a chance this is entirely defective. It's a small capacitor though. Let's try another. You can see it close a bit there. Um, so, but it's not leaking because it opens right up. Well, I think we need to check the value on this this guy. Um, we can do it with this instrument. 0 0.002. So we'll set it over here. 0 0.002 is going to be in this scale range. And now we'll just move this. You can see the eye. You can't see the eye. You need to see the eye. See it popping open there? Okay, it opens right here. Look at the scale. We have 0 0.001 there, 0 0.005 here, so 0 0.001, 0 0.002. So this is reading 0 0.025. 0 0.025. 0 0 Let's try it on another device. Testing it on another device here. If the capacitor is leaky, I don't believe you can successfully make these tests. You'll get false readings, uh, often higher capacity, even higher rating than the capacitor itself. So it's good to know if it's leaky. The modern capacitor testing stuff is not so interested in the kind of leak we're interested in with these old high voltage equipment. So it has a different type of test. See what it says. Okay, so it says two, 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 three picofarads. So that's point uh, zero zero two. It's right on the money. It's dead on. And so V loss zero. So according to this tester, this capacitor is in perfect shape. That tells me a little bit about the rest of the capacitors in this unit. Uh, we can guess they're also in good shape. The unit seems to be operating. Okay, so now I'm going to plug it into a regular outlet. Okay, she's plugged in. 
it's on, the light is on. And now we want to read the AC voltage that's, that's here. Good question. Can I read it with just the single AC probe? And uh, what about watching the meter? What, what about turning it right side up? Okay, I hate to move things like this when they're on. I'm going to do that. Okay. Well, so you need it standing up like this. If you have it on its side or something, the weight of the pointer will throw the reading off. A small amount, I suppose. Okay, so just on the assumption now that I don't need to uh, connect this lead. It's been connected via the uh, green wire. That may be a bad assumption. Can we get a voltage here? Hey, 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 Jim. AC volt. Scale is 500 volt scale. Get a little bit there. It's not very reassuring. We go down a scale. That's not very good at all. There should be 117 volts reading there. And in fact, I'm reading on the 100 volt scale. I'm reading next to nothing. So there's an AC calibration adjustment, but it seems to me to be so far out. What are the chances? So I think this one is the AC calibration adjustment. Another dirty control. And it's not going to get there. Now, what else have I got? I've got an AC0 adjust, but I thought, let me disconnect here. Isn't this the zero? Yeah. So maybe there's a like a, a rough adjustment in the back here. Uh, I'm going to turn it for. Right? It's stupid to do this. You do things you don't need to do, but I'm going to be stupid. Okay, I don't see anything happening here. Let's put the voltage back on. So uh, I only, myself, I only use these meters for making, oh, jeez, <laughs> thank you. I only use these meters, uh, VTVMs, for doing DC measurements. Okay, back on this. Well, so that's the AC0 turned up full. Still zeros. And the AC calibrate. It's also also up full. So we're getting about half half the voltage here. Because we're reading about 60. Well that's interesting. Half the voltage. Half the voltage. Would that suggest a, uh, a re rectifier is only working half? No, I don't think it's quite that simple. Um, sorting this out, it could be a weak tube, it could be a bad resistor, it could be, it could still be a capacitor in there doing something like this. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Well, one of the tubes I think is easy to test. The other ones may not be quite so easy. I think that's what's next. Oh, I'm not on that panel, Jim. You gotta remember how you got to pull this plug out of here. Yeah, I think maybe we'll, we'll 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 give a shot at testing the tubes. See how that goes. Okay, I think we're ready to test the first tube. This is a 6H6. And I have it set to 6H6, but let's double check. 6.3. It's a diode, so we don't need to set this or the bias. The numbers are 2731P. 2731P and 06K 06K0 06K0 good 39 and A there we go so there's two tests for this tube 
It's a two part tube. It's two tubes in one. Give it a moment to warm up. Now, are there any special notes here? No. Okay, here we go. Any shorts in here? I'm watching the meter now. No. It's behaving normal. Rectifiers and diodes. So this is a diode. Come up to here, somewhere up here. There's a little spot here that says diodes okay. You can't read it. So it's right here. So just get above my thumb, you're good. Just just in the good side of things. And now we'll put on uh, the other half of the tube. You do that just by flipping the P and the K switch. P and the K. Repeat the test. Well, you know, it's there. Uh, I don't think this can explain anything about the operation of the, of the uh, meter. And I don't think this guy can be blamed for anything. Okay, so we'll try another. Let's try another. We'll try the, this is the, uh, this is the rectifier tube, 6X5 rectifier tube. I don't think this is very common. don't know if I have any of those. Okay, so I will test, set up the meter here, or the meter, tube tester for, for doing a 6X5. Okay, so it started raining fairly heavily outside, and both my cats are outside. Poor guys have gone somewhere to one of their hiding spots to hide from the rain. Good luck for them. 6x5. So it's a rectifier. 2730p. 2730p and 0610. 0610. 25 and E. Very good. P1 and P2. This is another two part tube. Give it a moment. bright in the tube tester. I don't think it was quite that bright uh, in, the, in the set. Okay, here we go. Any shorts in this tube? None. Okay, and we're testing rectifier. This time for a rectifier, the needle has to come up to above where my finger is now. That's good. And then we're switching to the other plate by pushing the P2 switch. I'm checking now. Good. Tube is good. Tube is good. The tube is good. Well, there's only one more tube. These uh, devices like that use these, these tubes, they don't use these tubes the way you might find a tube used uh, in an amplifier. Uh, they do funny things with these tubes. They have interesting circuits that they put them in. 6 SN7. That's the tube. You see the top of it is discolored, so this suggests this tube's been busy for quite a while. Can you tell the insides are actually a little tipped to the left? Can't really see that with the camera. Doesn't mean anything. Okay. 6x, no, 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 no. What, what did I say that was? Did I say what it was? Yeah, 6SN7. Another very common tube. Very common tube. Okay, I'll set this up and then we'll check it and go. Okay, we're ready to go. 6SN7, 6SN7, 6.3, signal level 2, 18H. GPK53. GPK53. 1760. 1760. 28. F. This tube, if it can't get above 840 on the scale, 840 is about here, then it's time to uh, sell the customer a new tube. There we go. Put them in. 
This is also uh, two tubes in one. So it's actually two tests to test both both sides of the tube, if I can put it that way. Sometimes these tubes, uh, call, like uh, tubes with more than one function, they'll share a cathode like, with both functions. Other times they don't. They have a separate cathode too. I think this one's a separate cathode. Separate plate and cathode and grid. Totally separate tubes, in fact. I believe. Okay, we're ready to go here. Are there any shorts? No. If there was short, the meter would, would come up. There isn't a short. Okay. P1, G1, K1. So it's plate, grid, and cathode on one. Here we go. GM test. 840. Way above it. Way above 840. Now we'll do the other half of the tube. Here we go. Way above. So no problem with the tubes. No surprise here. A device like this is not like a radio that's on every day for six hours. A device like this might be on, well, just very occasionally in fact. Uh, so the wear and tear on the vacuum tube is going to be low. What, what I think can happen in a device like this is, is other components that are going to degrade over time just by being such as capacitors do that. The rest of the components, oh, take that out of there. The rest of the components, uh, well, okay, so we have a problem here with this thing reading AC volts. It's just six miles off. Got a lousy schematic to work with. This is not a meter I would use to read this AC voltage anyway. I see one big bad looking resistor down there appears to be well, it doesn't really feel disrupted or anything um, could there could it be ha, 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 so, so it works in DC so the bulk of the circuitry must be good what is it about AC that causes it to read only half I don't know if I want to pursue this uh, any, any further than I have already I'm stuck holding the camera here, so I'm going to stop for a minute. Yeah, just just something kind of funny here. So, did somebody put on a three-prong plug from a device that originally had just a two-pronger, non-polarized? The answer is probably yes, for sure. Probably for sure, because I'm trying to take the cord out, and this plug won't go through. <laughs> So whoever did it must have fed the cord through here first. How much you want to bet they soldered it up and then went, oh, I can't get the button. Unsolder it and push the cord through and do it. So I can't get the cord out of here. I'd like to get it out because I want to dump the junk out of it. Oh well, small, small problem. No big deal. Okay, so now that this meter uh, appears to be in good shape, let's turn it on again. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this meter now to check this meter. So th this is a not a vacuum tube voltmeter. Um, nine volt battery inside it. Maybe there's a nine volt battery in there. Um, so it's got AC, DC, and ohms. So only two leads, so ohms plus and minus, plus and minus. Oh, the word ohms is applying to the scale here. Plus and minus is to the switch. The ohms scale turned off. Caution, observe safety rules. <laughs> okay, so we'll put it on DC. Zero adjust. How, how, how would that work? Because it needs. Them. Maybe this is a. Uh, maybe there's more to this meter. Um, if it was left in the in an on position. If the nine volt amp is left in ohms. So if there's a nine volt battery in there that's required to drive this, if it's got electronics in it, 
This tester has been designed for your, with your safety in mind. However, no design can completely protect against incorrect use. Read the instruction manual. Do not exceed the limits. Double check. Switch settings before connecting leads. Fuses must be must have the proper size. Do not touch exposed metal. In high voltage circuits, turn off the source. Do not connect voltage circuits when switch is set to ohms or current ranges. Do not use test leads with cracked or damaged insulation. Caution. High energy electrical circuits can be lethal. Safety is no accident. <laughs> the company I worked for had a motto. No job has priority over safety. And, uh, yeah, they took safety pretty seriously where I worked. I used to work in the power company in, uh, in Toronto. Toronto's power company is where I used to work. So see, the lead here is cracked everywhere. They're warning against that. The black, the black wire has gone stiff. The red one, that's pretty stiff too. But it's not cracked. Okay, well, we can still make some tests and checks here. So what I've done now, in the midst of all, oops, all these uh, wires, let's put this guy on here. My power supply up here, which can supply a high voltage, is connected to this gray wire, and here are the clips coming down from the voltage supply. So all I gotta do, and I've got it clipped onto this meter, right? So we're going to turn this one up and if we can get it off ohms. I wonder why. Yeah, it's interesting. It goes up at all. No battery in it. Ohms plus, or volts plus rather. Let's get it straight. 100 volts. Let's take it up to the 50 volt mark again. Let's turn it on. Up to the 50 volt mark. It's one of the reasons why I like indicating meters uh, as opposed to digital meters. You have to read the numbers and your brain has to process them. 50, 50. What does this guy say? Okay, so we're going to put them onto the 100 volt scale. Let's flip to DC. I guess this is plus. Uh, yeah, this is zero control is worrying me a little bit. There we go. Other way around, we should see an upscale reading, and it should point straight up if it's if it's accurate. Hello, hello. No business here. So I'm willing to bet the whole problem is a lack of battery power, and that this is an electronic meter. Screws disengaged. There we go. Just have to get a little bolder. The usual foam that shot. Where's our 9 volt battery? Hey, there's more than one. What's going on here? We got this. Uh oh. We got this. Really? And we've got. We've got battery contact here. Let's see what this says. 9 volt battery need a number something or other underneath. Underneath what? 1.5 volt D cell that's to run the uh, that's what's sitting on top. And then over here 1 amp 1 amp fuse right in here. And spare fuse there's a spare fuse sitting right there. Uh, 9 volt battery, 
here, two 9 volt batteries in here. And I can see there's an electronic circuit board. So a little more to this meter than I thought. Well, let's stick, let's see, I will get, I'm going to get some batteries and we're going to try it out. Okay, last of my 9 volt batteries. So we're going to pick one of these, pick this one. Just going to put one battery in for a minute. Let's see if we get anywhere with just one battery. Try this side first. So the meter looks like it's gone backwards. Hard. It's going backwards hard. That's a zero problem. That's what you get when you get only one battery hooked up. Because maybe it's 18 volt, maybe it's uh, either side of a, like a, like a double-ended supply here or something like that. Oh, there we are. Now we're somewhere. Okay, now we have, we still have 50 volts sitting down here, which I kind of forgot about. So we're zero. Very nice. We're on the 300 scale. Let's put on the 100 scale straight up is what we're looking for. How about now? Straight up, right on the money. Nice meter. Oh, something just fell out of it. Let me spare, spare fuse just to me try to make him escape. Well, that's pretty good. Um, is there anything else really to test on this? If it works well on one scale, it's almost certain to work well on all the scales. We'll go to 10 volts. We'll crank this down to 5. 5, 5, 5. Does that be straight up on this meter? That should be 5 volts. 4.9, 4 5 volts. 10 volt scale should be straight up again. Lovely. She's a winner. Once again, I, I don't think I'm going to. Oh wow! This, now this meter might be interesting actually to operate because it's portable, and uh, I'm guessing the input impedance is very high. But this is like a battery-operated vacuum tube voltmeter. It's probably got transistors in it doing the job. I'm guessing. So let's let's put it let's put a D cell in there. I think I think I might have one. I'll go look. I was just in Costco a couple days ago and I went by their batteries and I thought, gee, should I buy some batteries? I decided not to. So I think this one's old. Uh, yeah, that's not going to do the trick. Well, it might. It might actually do the trick. But let's. Well, that's strange. Straight out of the package. Why is it going up? Bad connections in my 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 testers. That's better. I bet you this one reads full now. Tester in trouble. Okay, put that one in. Yeah, I was gonna, gonna buy batteries and thought, nah, what am I gonna need batteries for? Okay, so we're gonna follow the instructions. This guy goes to the bottom. attempt failed. <laughs> there we are. Is that good enough? Yeah, that's good enough. Battery here. What's positive? What's negative? This way. meter just to make sure it's still working we still have five volts nicely damped too I like that okay off what about the resistance okay, the 
I've set this to infinity. Should be just a little higher there. There we are. Look at that. Fantastic. And if we want to read a resistance, quickly supply me with a resistor, please. Okay, we'll pick one. Here's one. Looking for a wire wound one like this. This is uh, 2,500 ohms. Oh yeah? Are you really? 2,500. So that would be on this scale. Ooh, that didn't look so good. Twenty five hundred times a thousand. This this is where I should be here really. That'd be two point five. So it reached two point five somewhere on that meter. So it's right around the on the ohm scale. Ha, it's right on. Two point five. Very good. It wasn't right on, but for a meter like that, that's right on. Excellent. Very good. I like that. Just have to remember to turn it off. This one won't beep at you. There we go. Kind of like this. It doesn't say anywhere what its input impedance is, but I bet you if we went and looked, it's very high. Maybe as high as the uh, vacuum tube volt meters. So that's great. That's for my field calls. field calls me. There we go. Fantastic. Hey, want to do one more meter? And then we'll call it quits. Let's do one more. Instead of these high quality jobs. How about this? When I was uh, a teenager, my meter was one like this. This was my meter. I did all my work with a little piece of junk like, like this. Okay, so we still have 5 volts. So we're going to pull this out of the K ohm setting. We're going to put it in the 15 volt setting. It says DC and ohms here. Okay, can this thing read 5 volts? Where would 5 volts be? So we're on a 15 volt scale. 5 volts is going to be right about here. So about a third of the way up because it's the 15 Volt scale. Yeah, that makes sense. Some of these meters, if you if you stand them up, they don't read properly. Of course, this is not. There's no precision in this anyway. So, but here we go. It's a winner. Very good. But I'm not likely to use this meter. Very good. I'm going to put this back here. Do I have any more meters to check? No, I think I'm out of meters for now. So how many how many vacuum tube voltmeters do I have? So this is my go-to vacuum tube voltmeter. This is my latest uh, addition. You can feel the heat building up in it a little bit. I have one up here in reserve. I have this really nice one here with an incredibly high input impedance. 120 mega ohms, I think. And then I have this audio meter here. Packing tube voltmeter. That one always gives me a little bit of trouble. This switch has become unreliable on it. But that, that's a lovely meter there. You know, it has an input, has an output. It's meant for uh, audio recording studio or something like that. And then I have way up here, let me just raise the camera. I have this guy. It's another wonderful meter. It's a really old one. Uh, I often I often use this meter. Uh, I can't kind of see the scale on it, but it's there. That's a, uh, what you would call, I guess, an audio output meter. And that's this guy saying, I'm going to turn off. I beat you to it. I'm going to turn off my power supply. 
And guess what? I have another vacuum tube voltmeter set up with my uh, ham radio equipment and uh, my shortwave listening post. And what it does is, uh, I just got the power off to this in case you saw the meter drop. What, what it does, uh, what that voltmeter does for me is it monitors the uh, AVC voltage on a big old military radio. And uh, it's very, very helpful. So I got all kinds of these meters now. I, I would have killed for one of these when I was a kid because this is what I had. <laughs> you can't do much with something like this. That's for sure. But better than nothing. Yeah, when I was a kid, I bet you when you were a kid, things were scarce. And somehow, somehow we liked it. Okay, that's it for, for yesterday and today. I am done tomorrow. Guess what we're going to look at tomorrow? Tomorrow, this guy is coming in here. I'm going to take a look at this, see what we got. Great, thank you very much for, for watching this video. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.